Hello stampers, I'm Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. It's a beautiful sunny day out there today. I am going to be sharing a couple cards with you using the amazing Expressions in Ink Suite. Oh, I love watercolor and I love these kind of like marble looking patterns. Beautiful, beautiful paper to work with. I hope you're going to like it as much as I do, but I have some um, a couple cards to share with you that are really going to showcase this beautiful paper. It's all part of the Stampers Dozen Blog Hop where we are using our newest catalog favorites today. So when we get to the end of the video, if you can click in the top right corner, it's backwards from what I say, in the top right corner, you're going to be able to go to my blog and hop along and see what all the other design team members made using their favorite products from the new annual catalog. So hang tight, I'm going to flip this camera around and we are going to make a beautiful card or two. Hang tight. As soon as I saw this suite in our new annual catalog, I knew it was for me. It was like on the top of my list. I love all these beautiful, beautiful papers. Watercolor just always holds a special place in my heart. So for our cards today, I'm going to be using the Expressions in Ink Specialty Designer Series paper. You get um, two sheets in each pattern. Like this is the front, this is the back, this is the front, this is the back. They're double-sided. Two sheets in each pattern in 12 inch by 12 inch. This goes along with the artistically inked stamp set and also the artistic dies. And we are going to be using this big leaf and this big flower. Now there are dies to cut out the rest of these flowers and the leaves and then some great sentiments with some really pretty fonts. Okay, I've also got, oh, let me, I can't forget this, the Expressions in Ink Ephemera Pack. This is an amazing pack of goodies that coordinates with this suite. And we're going to be using some of these gold foil elements out of here, as well as these beautiful self-adhesive sequins. Yay, I love it when they have the glue on them, right? Let's get started. I like to use a piercing mat here. This is one of our piercing mats. It's called a Stampin' Pierce mat, I believe, in the in the online store. You can just type that in and it'll pop right up. This is my surface that I like to stamp on. And before I go too much further, I would like to tell you, this is my current host code. Um, if you place an order with me, and I always appreciate your orders, if you place an order with me, use this code if your order's under $150. That entitles you to some special perks. If your order's over $150, do not use this code. You're going to get some rewards from Stampin' Up, and I want you to have those. And of course, you can always find me at stampabove.com. All right, so my first card is really an easy card. But like I said, the paper does all the work for us. It's really spectacular. So I've got a thick card base here. This is five and a half by eight and a half. I've already scored it at four and a quarter. I always like to score this thick card stock because it just folds nicer. So I'm just gonna set that aside. I am going to, oops, let's see, I'm going to use this particular pattern of paper. Isn't this gorgeous? Oh my goodness, I just love it. And I am going to die cut my leaves. I want them to be on this watercolor with the gold veining running through it. So I am going to, um, let's bring in my Stampin' Cup. Whoa, an emboss machine. Let's not throw things. Keep it under control. I'm just gonna run this through. This is a nice intricate die. I gotta get it started here, there we go. My guy is gonna be working on my new desk pretty soon so that when I do stuff like this, my camera's gonna be mounted on the wall instead of wiggling around on my desk when I do things like this. So I'm kind of excited about it. Look how pretty that is, right? Okay, and all the little pieces came right out of my die. So we'll get those out in a second. Now I'm gonna bring in my paper trimmer. And what I wanted to show you here 
is I would like to do something on the inside of my card perhaps, and I can do that with what's left over here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in and I'm going to cut off about three quarters. We'll see if this is, do you think this is going to be, let's see, this card is a tall card. Ooh, I don't know if that's gonna be enough. So that probably won't work. But I am gonna save this because we can use this for something else, right? <laughs> full paper hoarding, full paper hoarding. Okay, now I want my leaves to run down this lighter um, pattern in the center. So I need my cardstock to be four by five and a quarter, and I think this is gonna be just perfect. So I've got it up to the four inch, and now I'm gonna cut it off at five and a quarter. And now we can maybe get a little edge here for the inside of our card. And I think I'm just gonna go up to three quarters of an inch and cut a, cut a strip off of here, because I, I don't have any strips that size I can just pull out of my pack of paper. And then we're gonna go at five and a half. And we'll see, we'll see if we even use that. We might not. Okay, I cut that. Is this, oh, that's not the piece that I need. This one is. <laughs> I'm like, what did I just do? Okay, now I wanted to use my ephemera pack. This is really, really pretty with all these. All of these are separated by a sheet of tissue paper. And I am going to grab Let's see. And these come out of the die, or um, they're die cut, and they come out super easy. Okay, so I already cut those for a different project, so let's keep going here and see what I need. I've already used that and that. I think I'm gonna have to grab a new sheet. Hang tight here. And I want this piece right here in the middle. So this is the piece I'm gonna use. I'm gonna pop out this little sprig, set it aside. This is the piece that I need for the card we're making right now. There we go. We're gonna set that aside. And now I'm just gonna pull out these middle pieces. Okay, so this is the piece that we're gonna use for this card. All right, now what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna go on the front of our card and I want this to frame my sentiment. And we're gonna be using polished pink. This is one of our brand new in colors. Polished pink with the Hello stamp. So I'm gonna put this, I'm just gonna lay this here for now and make sure that I can, you know, get this on here, right? Stamp this right in here. Oh. And then you could use a sponge with some glue on the back for this, but what I found worked just fine for me was just to dab little, little tiny bit of glue on this. So you don't want the glue gushing out all over. So it needs to be real tiny little just like that, I don't even know if you can see that, but it's a lot, little, little glue. And then I'm going to frame my hello. I wanna get that centered, hang tight. And there we go, oh, that looks great, yay. Okay, this little piece, we need to get all those bits out. So I'm going to grab my stampin' or my die brush. And I keep mine in a paper pumpkin box. It just works good because I can just close the lid and worry about all the bits staying in here instead of making a mess all over the place. And I turned the paper pumpkin box inside out so that it wouldn't get lost in my studio with other paper pumpkin boxes because this one doesn't look like a paper pumpkin box. So I hope that makes sense. You don't have to turn it inside out. I could have put a label on the end of it that said die cutting brush, but I don't know. This is what I did. <laughs> I'm not going to explain myself any further. <laughs> you ever feel like that? It's like, just shut up. You don't need to talk anymore. You don't need to explain exactly why you do the crazy things you do, right? Okay. 
This is very intricate. So we're going to poke just a couple more of these out of here, I think. Yay. Oh, one more. One more little one right there. Here we go. Okay. Now we're going to take this and I think we need to trim it, right? And we do. I'm going to trim off these top two leaves. So I'm going to grab my snips here. I'm just going to trim those off. I can use those for something else. And this is going to go, oh my gosh, it's so, so pretty, isn't it? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some glue on my stem where I have some little bigger areas. Okay, so like right at the base of each of these leaves. Oops, I got a little hitchhiker there. Hang on. Where did my pokey tool go? There it is. Take your pick tool is my catch-all for everything. I love this thing. Boy, that one, I can't get a hold of it. Okay, and just a little bit more right here. Okay, now I'm going to put this in here. And then, so then the tips of my leaves are gonna kind of stick up. Can you see that? It's kind of just really cool. <laughs> I've still got a couple little hitchhikers here. Hang on, that'll make me crazy. There we go. Okay, we'll just blow them away, right? Steve every once in a while will come in here and vacuum my office, so I need to make sure there's stuff for him to do. <laughs> That was funny. Uh, let's be real. It was funny. Now, he has plenty to do. I keep him pretty busy. Okay, so I wasn't sure if I should stamp on the inside or if I should just do this. But I did, since I've got a really pretty little hello on the front, I wanted to have some type of a sentiment here on the inside. And I think I'm going to go with the polished pink again. And I'm going to stamp this way over here at the side. Oh, that turned out really good. So that this will fit in here. Just like that. And I could have maybe done it not so far to the side. Should we try again? Watch, we can do that because we can cover this up with the front. So let me try that again. I've been doing a lot of do-overs lately. <laughs> Some days are just like that, aren't they? I like to leave a little white on the side here, on this side. And then let's see if I can stamp this again and not make a mess out of it. I'm gonna stand up. Yeah, I think this is gonna look better. It is, yay, okay. So I'm going to glue this down. This paper just makes my mouth water. So I've been telling people, and this is what I've been doing. I'm not just, I just don't tell people to do stuff and then not do it myself most of the time. Um, but I have been buying at least two packs of designer paper. And the reason why is because if I only have one pack, I hoard it. I like don't wanna use that one pattern in it because I might find something that I need to make and I won't have that pattern anymore. But I find if I buy two packs or more of designer paper, I use more of it. So that is my great big advice to you. If you want to use your paper, buy more of it. <laughs> and then you will stop hoarding. Stop the madness. Okay, and last but not least, we have this beautiful Simply Elegant trim. This is a combo pack with gold and silver. And since we have such pretty gold um, in our paper... Like I said, your paper really does take over the show here. Like, you don't have to do much to this to make it just so spectacular. Let me try that again. It's curling on me. There we go. Okay, so let's work this down. Probably didn't need tails that long, but you get a lot on a roll, so I don't have to feel too chintzy about it. There we go. Mini glue dots. Let me bring out my little bucket of everything good. And I'm going to put that right up here at the top of my stem. And then we're going to add, let me see if I can get some more. Yeah. I want this to be just a little bit bigger. There we go. 
Okay. Trim this off a little bit. Trim this off a little bit. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. And of course, in my quest to use my designer series paper, if you cover the flaps of your envelopes, you are going to be very successful at using your designer series paper, right? Use it, use it. You can always get more. And sometimes paper is trendy. It's trendy colors or it's trendy patterns. And it goes out of style. And then there you sit with all this paper. That Yeah, you could use it, but then you're making cards that are outdated. You know, like imagine if we started making Holly Hobby cards. Did I just date myself there? Like Holly Hobby is from a million years ago. She was wonderful. We loved her, but she's over now. <laughs> Remember when the white geese with the, all the blue trim was really in style? Yeah, that's gone now too. We don't, we don't want to make cards with that. Look at how pretty that is, you guys. Who isn't going to love to get this in the mail? And oh, by the way, my sentiment, thought you could use some sunny thoughts today, comes from the Sunny Sentiment stamp set. This is just a beautiful sentiment set that's in our new annual catalog. Okay, who's ready for one more card? I've got another really easy one for you. Let me get out my bits and pieces here. All right. Once again, oh, I've got an envelope right here. Ooh, I don't know if I cut any extra. I'll have to cut some more of this paper. Once again, we are going to be letting our paper do all the work here. So I told you that I was going to use this die, this great big giant flower die, right? So my black layer here is four by five and a quarter. And I'm gonna see if I can put this right in the middle, this die right in the middle of that layer that I'm gonna put on the front of my card and keep it away from the edges so you don't see that this is die cut. Hang tight. Now, when you're die cutting very intricate dies like this, if there's one piece of advice that I can give you that'll save you a lot of frustration, it is, always look at the back of it before you take the paper out of the die because you can tell if it didn't cut all the way and you need to perhaps turn it and run it through again. But I love to, if you can, leave my paper on my die because then I can be really aggressive with my die brush. If you didn't have the die on here, you would have to be more careful as you're using the brush to get out all those bits. So if you can leave your die on, do that. Then you can be really aggressive and then you won't have as many things to poke out individually. So now I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful to get these little bits out. Right? <gasps> Look at how pretty that is. And again, these, these dies are really nice. Everything just pretty much kind of falls right out of the die, falls right out of here. It's just, they're fabulous. Now, don't throw this piece away because we're going to use this on our card. I don't need this. This was a scrap of black to do this die, so we don't need that. Again, I'm using thick basic white, five and a half by eight and a half, and I've already scored it at four and a quarter. Get all these bits out of here. Okay. Um... I'm gonna grab a little piece for a banner. These are the edges after I cut my white cardstock layers at four by five and a quarter. These are the half inch pieces that are left over. So I'm going to grab my shaded spruce ink. My happy birthday stamp from the artistically inked set. Yay. And then I'm gonna grab my banner pick a punch. And I want the one that is going to leave it like it's an arrow on the end. So what I like to do is put my paper down in here and then I'm gonna turn it over so I can see the other side. Boom. Oh, that gave me a banner. That isn't really what I wanted. Let's try it again. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. I was so excited to use my punch. Let's see if I can stamp this straight again. Yeah, pretty good. Okay, 
So I'm gonna put this in this side this time. So you're gonna feed it down in here. There's three different channels for you to be able to be successful with this punch. I did it again, you guys. Good Lord. Let's try it again. Kelly, 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 Kelly. Pay attention. Sorry. <laughs> Yay. I think I got too close now. <laughs> we want to use this side. So let's try that. I think I got it right this time, you guys. I like to turn it so that my happy birthday is this way so I can see if I'm actually cutting into my words. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, so we're gonna trim this a little bit. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. And of course you could make it a banner. You could have used the banner side. There we go. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> you've got the banner and you've got the pointy one that does this. And again, three different sizes on each side. And this is called the banner pick a punch. Okay, we're gonna put some mini dimensionals on that. Oh, no, not yet. Um, where did that piece go that I pulled out? Okay. This little piece right here that I pulled that sprig out of, we're gonna actually cover the missing sprig up and use this as a layer under, whoops, under our birthday sentiment. <laughs> and no, I have not been drinking. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on here, right in the middle. We're gonna layer this right on our layer. Make sure that I, oops, got to give us that chance to set up a little bit. Kind of hard to see what I'm doing from this angle to keep my head out of the camera. Okay, look, we covered that little sprig up that was missing. So I am going to do some dimensionals on the back of here. And now we're going to bring this layer in. And the flowers. Now, I'm going to put these right over top of this beautiful layer. This layer is three and seven eighths by five and an eighth. So, again, you could use a sponge on the back of this paper or this die cut, I mean. But I'm just going to add some glue in some of the bigger areas on here in the center of the flowers and the leaves. And then we're going to put it right on, ooh, I just heard the UPS man. He's just dropped off a package. I hope it's from Step It Off. <laughs> you guys get really excited. Yeah, I know. Here we go. This is just like the easiest card. And again, it's all about the designer paper, right? And the little elements that you put on there. Oh, that's a little crooked, hang on. You can pull this up easily if you don't let it set too long. I'm gonna hold this up because Kelly is on the struggle bus today, I'll tell you. Okay, then we're gonna take this and put it on here. So I'm gonna run some glue right around just the edges of my designer paper. This side is really pretty too, right? Get that out of there. So this is a good way to save on your paper. I didn't need to use another black piece to die cut, right? Huh. Oh, look. Ooh, that's kind of pretty, too. Yeah, I wonder what you could do to that. You could probably put inlaid in there in a different color. Oh, the ideas. All right, now I just cut this piece, which is from this pretty little layer. Did you hear? You know who? Alexa. She just told me that my UPS order came. 
And I'm going to leave this blank on the inside except for just a layer of this cardstock and then I or designer paper and I can write over here. Then I'm going to add this layer to the front of my card. Oops, let's put a little bit of glue in there. And again, I have totally used the designer paper to do like all the work for me. So pretty. And I've got an envelope. Now, this sheet right here, um, you could do the same thing with this. You just cut your cardstock, right? Or your designer paper so that you've just got this over on the edge. And there's some pink in the pack too that you could do this with. So you could let, let your cardstock do its, or designer paper do its work for you. Beautiful paper is easy pickings for making cards. And I'm just gonna put this right on here. This is two and a half by six. And we're gonna cover this envelope. So we have another beautiful set ready to go in the mail. And I have a bunch of cards that I need to get out. I send cards out to my team members every month, not all of them at once, but um, we have top sales and we have prizes we give away, like drawings for anniversary and, and uh new team members and all kinds of fun stuff. Look how pretty that is, you guys. Is that not gorgeous? No, we didn't use any of these. I'm thinking, let me get that little black thing out of there. We could certainly pop a few of these on here. I love my take your pick tool for this kind of stuff because it just makes it so easy. Look at how pretty that is, that iridescent. Here comes my pink card. So let's get some, a little bit of, blingy blingy going on here too. Oh, and this has pink in it. So that really picks that up. And we'll do one more maybe right there. Ah, look at that. Can you see it? I hope you can see it, you guys. Oh my gosh, these are so, so pretty. And you saw how easy they were, right? We do some die cutting and then we use the paper to do all the hard, heavy lifting. All right, you guys, so don't forget, please click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You do not want to miss anything I have coming out. I've got um, next, I believe uh, in the next few days, I have another blog hop where I'm going to use the Sending Hugs Bundle. That is a brand new one in the annual, annual catalog. I think uh, the 20th is when that's going to pop up here. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. I've got tons and tons of ideas happening with new products. So click down here to subscribe. You're gonna click right up here in the top right corner and that's going to take you to my blog. You're gonna scroll down until you see these cards. And when you see these cards, you're gonna find a blog hop or a blog roll where you're gonna have like a next button to click on or a list of people and you can hop from blog to blog. Everybody's featuring new products in this blog hop. So I hope you will um, take advantage of that and go check out some new ideas. Again, this is my current host code. I always appreciate your orders. That's what keeps me bringing you free videos because I do love to share with you. Thank you so much for taking a little bit of time out of your day to spend with me. You have a great weekend. Bye-bye.